Hi, Dave with DBS Tech Talk, and today we're going to talk about my venture into in-ear earphones. Um, for the longest time, I was very much into whatever comes with my phone, whatever uh, comes in the package with whatever else I purchased. Um, hey, these are five bucks at the dollar store. Here we go. And I didn't think that it really mattered because those just like your headphones are not something that you invest into and um, what's the purpose of just spending money on something that's just going to break anyways so you know I always use the cheapies that came in the phones uh, in, in, with your phone and about five or six years ago I really wanted to step up the game and see what was out there so I started to do a little research on the internet and I came across these and these are my first venture into something that I actually paid for when it came to to in ears and they are the Pioneer SE CL 721H's now I, I believe these are all, all, all most definitely discontinued and um, they're not bad quality build they're fairly durable they've lasted you know five six years on me the wire can be a little desirable they're slightly uh, spongy they do get tangled up you can straighten them out I didn't straighten them out before this review but uh, they can be straightened out they do have a nice wire straightener um, they have a little 90 on there it is a thick housing on the cable I don't know if you can see that and it's uh, hard to get into some cases so if your phone like for example this phone here I cannot get it in there because I do not have a big enough port on my whoop, my V30 but some phones if you don't go with the case it'll fit if you go with a case that has a big cutout it'll fit um, so just be aware of that if you do find these or similar mark nicely right left red and white and hey thank you pioneer you make it very easy to be able to pick them up they have a, a slight angle on the build on uh, they go in your ears they actually are comfy to wear they're not heavy they fit in them they're snug they don't come out and they fit they they work best with comply tips which does change the sound um, but I found with the silicones they're they're just not comfortable at least for me uh, every ear is different no matter if you have silicones or the complies in, these things are for bass heads. They're very thumpy bass. Uh, they will get your head rocking. The mids and the treble are decent. The treble is not super well extended. Uh, it's not overly detailed headphone. But uh, if you like bass and you want some good isolation, Pioneer SE 721Hs, um, SE CL 721Hs, excuse me these may be for you they're cheap they're like 20 bucks at least they were back then um, then I, I proceeded to to get the LG V10 and with them came a pair of quad beats tuned by AKG and I'm sorry but the build quality on these is not good they're constantly getting tangled up they're heavy. Um, the build quality on these is, it, it, they look nice, but they're heavy. They don't stay in my ear. They do have a in-ear mic um, remote, inline remote. The cable at the end terminates into it, and this one fits nicely into phones. So it's not near as bad. You do still have a little bit of a slight issue because it does not have what's called step down. So if you don't have a massively huge um, cutout on your case, you may struggle with these, but they fit into most. And they're uncomfortable, as I already said. Uh, the angle on them is fine as far as how they fit in your ear, but they're heavy, so they're constantly pulling down. And the, the speaker port for the ear is huge and massive. And to me, it barely fits in the ear so it doesn't, I mean, they're, they're bad. Soundwise are decent. 
but they're so uncomfortable, I couldn't keep them in my ears for longer than five, 10 minutes at the most. And um, the bass is nice and smooth. It's not boomy, not like the Pioneer. Uh, the treble is, is recessed and so are the mids, but they're not awful sounding. You can EQ them uh, and they sound pretty decent, but again, comfort was not for me. I wanted to try an, an over the ear, so I went again and did some research. Everybody recommended the Me Audio. And so I got these, and I remember I loved these things for a couple of years. They were nice and comfy. These are the M6s, and decent bass. Uh, the mids are, are about evenly balanced, and uh, they have nice texture to them, and the highs. I didn't know any better at the time, but the highs are not that well detailed. Uh, and they're a little tinny. I don't know what I was thinking. I just tried these on couple before this review, and I was like, holy cow. But for just something for around the, the house um, to mow grass or you know maybe go running at the gym, these have enough bass and, and mids to get you in some enjoyment. The highs can be a little troublesome. So if you're looking for lots of detail or uh, sparkly highs, these won't be it. But as far as um, bass, these have got it. But my, my search continued, and I, I really wanted a good pair of in-ears. So when I went on a trip, they would just isolate sound, have good sounding bass, that's smooth in texture, not bloated, not thumpy but accurate. I wanted mids that were either even neutral or just slightly above and I wanted the highs to be a little forward but detailed and clear and it well extended. So the search continued and I ended up getting a pair of RHA S500s. I no longer have them. They have been um, gifted to a friend. But those impressed me even though they weren't over the ears they went in, the build quality was high quality, the um, the sound of them was was amazing. They had beautiful bass and great mids, and the highs were just impactful enough that, that you, you could get some good detail. But I wanted something that was more, again, over the ear and um, something that was a little a little more detail and clarity than the S500. The S500 was an amazing little RHA. If you're looking for something in the lines of like the Pioneer, um, but you want better quality, like all stainless steel made, and uh, not the boomy base, but a nice impactful base, the RHA S500 would be the way to go. And they're, they're like $40. Uh, still available on Amazon, I do believe. So I, I don't believe that the Pioneers are available anymore. But the RHAs are an excellent choice. So, as I did my research of in-ears, I looked at Mi Audio, I looked at Shear, I looked at um, Theo, I looked at the Brainwaves, I looked at Ultimate Ears, I, 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 I looked at RHA... I looked at all kinds of name brands. You, you, you list it, I watched a review on it. I did like six months worth of debating on what to do, asking people what they recommended, um, reading reviews on Reddit and on Hi-Fi and, and all kinds of places. And I just watched YouTube video after YouTube video. And I couldn't decide what I wanted but RHA kept coming back to me because the S500's build quality and the sound that those little itty bitty in ears brought just had an impact. And so RHA, RHA, RHA was what I kept coming back to. And so I watched every single RHA video that I could online, and I watched and I read about anything, anything that had RHA in the name. I watched, I, I read, and the CL1 and the CL750 started coming out, and the reviews on them started coming out and since I don't I'm not I don't have anything balanced in my possession I don't have a balanced amp I don't have about anything <coughs> excuse me the CL1 was a little bit on the back burner it wasn't that I was I didn't want 
to get into the balanced world. It was, I couldn't afford to get into the balanced world. And plus I didn't want to spend upwards of a couple hundred dollars on in-ears. I wanted to keep it more in the hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range. And so the CL750 impressed me. And everybody said, you need an amp. You need an amp for them. Well, I have plenty of amps. I have a portable amp. I have the Topping NX4. I have the uh, Fio Q1. And I have I had an SMSL SAP4 amp. What, little itty bitty thing, super paper thin. Um, I can't remember the model number. I do apologize. But anyways, I had portable amps lying around and also had my desktop, I had my topping stack. So I wasn't worried about amping. Plus I had the LG V20 at the time and you know, that's supposed to have a great amp in it. And so I was gonna give that a shot. So I found a deal on the CL750 uh, and they came, they came in a beautiful box, uh, very nicely laid out and um, plethora of tips and uh, all kinds of good stuff very actually the tip holder is metal and uh, it comes with a nice little setup on it as you just pull them off and put them back in it holds them in place really nicely sorry I didn't pull it out for the review and when you take the the, the in-ears off they're very well made they're they got a little heft to them but they don't feel as heavy at, because they're not top heavy like the LGs are and they they feel well balanced when you're holding them the memory wire thing doesn't really stay in place very well it's a little bit more spongy um, it works the cable is my least favorite thing now it's nice quality cable don't get me wrong there, but it's just a little too spongy. So if you leave them uh, wrapped up for a little bit, you're going to have to sit there and be annoyed untangling them. Uh, they're not... It's really, really good. It's probably the best cable for an in-ear that I've had. Uh, minus the Advanced Alpha, which... Or not the Advanced Alpha, the, the Advanced Sound Model 3 excuse me, um, review, which is going to come on its own, but that, this is probably the best cable as far as quality to it. It's just, I just wish that the, the rubberized covering on it wasn't quite as spongy as it is. Tip-wise, I decided to go with the triple flange silicones. Um, I found that the complies made them a little too too bassy for my liking and toned the highs down too much. But you may have different opinion. You know, each everybody's ears are different. Um, they fit nicely in the ear. They have a nice long extension on here. They're not. They go right in your ear. It's not too fat, like the LG, where it doesn't even fit into your ear. And they just go right in, seal nicely. Can't hear any sound. Don't even know if I was shouting on the camera. I probably was. Uh, but they they are very, very nicely uh, isolating. I use these on an airplane, and had to take them out every single time that the stewardess came around or that my wife tried to point something out to me out the window. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. No, they're not noise canceling, but they're definitely noise isolating. I mean, they're very good. They are of these four models. These are by far the best isolating sound if you get the right seal. So as I was doing my search, I needed. I, I had. I definitely had some requirements. Number one, they had to isolate well. These do that. Number two, they had to be comfort comfortable. These do that. They fit nicely in the ear. They go around the ear. Now they don't like snug in and stuff like that. So this part will possibly annoy you every now and then. Uh, they are 
they, they need to be adjusted every now and then. If you do any walking or um, moving around, they will bounce around slightly. And um, these are not for the gym or exercising. Uh, to walk around the office or down the hallway or around your house will be fine. But to mow grass or do anything of that sort, these are not for it. Um, these are a sit at your desk or sit on your couch um, type of headphone. Or sit in an airplane and enjoy your music or movie. The other thing that I needed was for sound and I needed the bass to be well extended and smooth and balanced sounding. I didn't want it to be bloated, thumping, over, overly um, extended, or excuse me, not overly extended, to be overly forward. I wanted the bass to be nice and balanced. I wanted the mids to be smooth and have good tim timbre to them and have a nice tone, sound natural. And then I wanted the highs to be slightly forward and nicely detailed and extended out with clear imaging. How do these fit that mold? Well, they hit the nail on the head on all of it. And I'm going to um, try to explain it to the best of my details. All right so that you as a consumer will understand. I'm not going to give you all the you know specifics and all this and that. Uh, I'm, I'm not a, a specs guy. I just want to know how do they sound and what do people think of them. So, first and foremost, you will need an amp. The box specifies you need an amp. Make sure you have an amp. Plain and simple. And I'll tell you why. When these came, I popped them into my phone, my LG V20 at the time, and I had to crank the volume all the way up on them, and they still didn't sound quite right. The highs were a little shrill, and the bass was lacking. The mids were there, but the bass was lacking, and the, the highs were... Whew. When I took them off of my, my V, and I plugged them into my topping stack, the highs became crisp and clear and the bass extended out nicely and added a little bit of a thump to them and the mids remained and had a glorious sound to them like RHA's uh, S500's had. So you definitely need to power these. If you're going to use your phone you're going to want a portable amp. Um, Fio Q1 or a topping NX4 or, or something along those lines will be um, adequate for it. You don't need some massively powerfully strong um, amp, but you need something that'll complement whatever your source is. Because um, these these do require sound, and they definitely sound a lot better with sound. The bass, um, the bass on these, it's. It has a pleasing sound, but it's not mega impactful like the Pioneers were. It's not as uh, recessed as the AKG Quad Beats, and it, it's not as uh, bloated as the cheap headphones that you would end up with that you get with your phone. Uh, but if you're a bass head, these will disappoint you. The bass on these is very well extended out. Um, it's accurate and it hits with a thud to let you know it's present but it's not hitting you with an impact that says hey I'm here um, they, it's just right where it should be in my opinion bass is amazing um, the mids are my favorite part of the CL750 They're well balanced and they mix well with the bass and treble. They don't bleed into each other and they have a very nice smooth transition. The, they're right in the middle. They're not forward or recessed. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, they're very well 
placed. Not too far up, forward, not too far back. Right in the middle. And um, classical music is awesome on the strings sound very natural um, guitars sound very natural very well defined and uh, pianos have a nice texture and tone to them the the mids are what make these shine and then the treble love or hate uh, for me I love but for a lot of others you may hate them if you're treble sensitive RHA CL 750s are not for you. Some songs can these sound hot, uh, they can sound sibilant, and um, to me they don't, but a lot of people would think they do. They are very, very high highs, um, almost can sound a little shouty and a little too forward at times for some. For me, I love that. That's, um, I like that it's clean, doesn't show any distortion, and it's smooth and clear. But if you're trouble sensitive, they're going to sound really bright and hot. Especially songs that have a lot of cymbals or a high tone to your voice. So, um, a Sandy Patty. Well, if you don't know who she is, she's a real high soprano, or uh, a lot of opera, like high-end opera, will sound very peaky, sibilant, and bright. So, if you're trouble sensitive, shy away from them. The detailing is decent. They have good spacing and imaging. You can hear if it goes right to left. They're not going to go super far deep and wide out, um, but they do show, you know, you, you can tell um, which side of the stage is coming from. You're not going to get the way up over your top of left of your right of your down low. You're not going to get all that, but they do enough for you to be able to get your separations of, you can tell which side of the stage is coming from. Um, they're... There's no clutter or jumble. Um, it's very clear as to where everything is and how they all fit. You're, it's not like on the Pioneer because there's such a warm and thumpy sound to them. It blocks out all the separation. They're not like that. Amping, yes, you definitely should adhere to the box that says uh, for use with amplifiers. And they, and they do scale differently with different amps. So um, if you have an amp or, or a DAC and amp that is very clear and very analytical, these are going to sound a little bit brighter. So like on my topping stack, they sound a little brighter than they do on my Music Hall DAC 15.2 um, DAC. And on a tube amp, it kind of mills out the... The highs a little bit and lifts the bass up a little bit more. So, depending on what what amping and DAC you are using, these will sound a little different. So, um, if you have a topping stack, just be prepared. If you're treble sensitive, these will make them that will make them sound more trebly. But if you have something that has a little bit of a warmer sound to it, these come out and play a lot nicer. Um, if you have recordings that are not of, of high quality or have a lot of defects in them, uh, older, bad recorded stuff, these will show detail and they will sound. They will make your music sound bad also. So um, just be aware of that because they are so detailed and so clear. They will they will make bad recordings sound worse. At least that's my my experience with them. So in conclusion, the RHA CL750 met all of my needs. I checked off all the boxes that I wanted when I began my search. Build quality is excellent. Um, Isolation is good. 
the sound is top notch, not bloated with bass, has smooth mids and the high is making me want to smile every time I put them on. And on top of that, I got them on sale for a hundred dollars. They retail for a hundred and forty. Um, so, yeah, I was glad. They they are definitely worth it in my opinion for a hundred to a hundred and forty dollars. I would probably pay upwards of one fifty for them. And any of these other three do I recommend? No, not really. The only one that I would pick, actually, probably to listen to something, believe it or not, would be the Pioneers, just because <laughs> they're so fun to listen to. They're warm, they're thumpy, and they'll get you up and moving. So if you're mowing the grass or something, those are the ones that you want, because they, they do have good isolation on the, on the Pioneer. But to sit back and listen to music and relax, RHA CL750. Are they worth it? Absolutely. If you can get them on sale, even better. RHA CL750, my favorite in ears for the time. Is there something that comes out again that beats them? Well, there's a lot of high end stuff, a lot of totally other units out there that you can mention, but I haven't tried those. So, RHA CL750, that's my pick for my ears. Is it your pick? For yours. This has been Dave with DBS Tech Talk. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.